We all love little coincidences that life sometimes throws at us, leaving us amazed at this phenomenon. Like in 2014, when I saw Dame Lillard virtually emulate the same exact shot that Brandon Roy did back in 2008. As you can see, they were eerily similar to one another. It was pretty much the same spot on the court as well as the same opponent, both sealing the victory at the buzzer. Now that's cute and all, but how about we get into some a little more stranger? So stick around as we take a look at some crazy NBA coincidences for the third time. Enjoy the video. We all know this as one of the greatest sports moments to ever go down, Michael Jordan's last shot as a bull. And with that came along arguably the greatest sports photo ever taken. This picture was snapped in the final seconds in Game 6 of the 1998 NBA Finals. Truly an iconic image. And if you look closely, you'll find a few interesting details. As you can obviously see, the clock clearly shows 6.6 .6 seconds left in the game. But if you take a look at what's behind the shot clock, you'll spot a little kid holding up six fingers in reference to the sixth ring that MJ is about to capture. He predicted, along with everybody else, that it was going in. But hold on, those aren't the only sixes hidden in this photo. Listen to this. Not only was the kid holding up six fingers with 6.6 .6 seconds left on the clock right before Jordan claimed his sixth championship, but you might realize that this was also Jordan's sixth finals appearance in the sixth month of the year. And he is also six foot six inches tall. Man, what's with all these sixes? And more importantly, what are the odds that the photographer decided to capture the picture at that exact moment. Now sure, at one point, the clock did say 8 seconds, and then eventually said 1 second. But correct me if I'm wrong, you can't find any other photo of this moment that is more iconic than this one. My point is, this 6.6 .6 version of events is the one that happened to go viral and live on forever. Capturing Michael releasing the ball simultaneously with those numbers, along with all those other sixes involved all in one image, is a nice little coincidence if you ask me. I know you're sick and tired of hearing things like, oh look, LeBron scored the 81st point at the 824 mark, or hey, look at the scoreboard, it says 8 to 24. We saw a ton of those this year, but trust me, this one will literally scare you. On the day of Kobe's untimely death, Ryan Kelly, who was one of Bryant's former teammates, played a game in Japan for the Sun Rockers. He ended up producing some pretty decent stats in that game, then went home to relax. But just like all of us, he was completely shocked when he heard the news that Kobe was involved in a helicopter crash. It was Sunday morning for us here in the States, but for Ryan, all the way over in Japan, it was much later than that. He couldn't believe what happened, and was stunned even more when he took a look at the numbers that he put up in the game that he had just played in. Ryan Kelly's wife, Lindsay, tweeted this Monday afternoon in Tokyo, which was Sunday night here, and what it said was absolutely unbelievable. Ryan scored 24 points in 24 minutes and 24 seconds of playing time. It was as if he went out there and put up that stat line on purpose to honor Kobe, but no, because it turns out that Kelly played in that game hours before the unfortunate tragedy, but didn't even realize his numbers until after he heard the news. But wait, it gets even weirder. I literally got goosebumps when I realized that Ryan Kelly was the very last player to ever sub in for Kobe, as the two embraced one another at the end of Kobe's 60 point performance. This is the kind of stuff that leaves me speechless. Just like when I found out about the kind of games Trey Young and Devin Booker had the day of the accident as well. Trey Young played against the Wizards, while Booker played against the Grizzlies, and when it was all said and done, they both combined for 24 makes, both took 24 shots each, and combined for 81 points together. Young also hit 81% of his free throws. 
Just for that day, Young chose to wear the number 8 in honor of Kobe, while Booker still wore the number 1. Now put them side by side, and once again, you get a tribute to Kobe. Remember, there was no way the two could have communicated to each other before their games and come up with some sort of plan to put up those numbers. Even if they wanted to, that ain't happening. So something freaky must have had an influence. I know this video is about coincidences, but I think it's safe to say that those numbers were anything but a mere coincidence. One of the most remarkable kind of coincidences that tends to happen from time to time is when siblings cross paths with one another without even knowing it. What if I told you a similar situation happened to a pair of NBA players? I know the majority of you guys are already aware that Vince Carter and Trace McGrady are related, but maybe you haven't heard of the story behind this discovery. These two never realized their family connection until the year 1997, and they have a family reunion to thank for it. During Vince Carter's junior year at North Carolina, he and McGrady used to train with each other and even shared the same locker because T-Mac didn't have his own, all while still completely unaware of their family ties. One day, McGrady nonchalantly mentioned to Carter that he wouldn't be around for a little bit because he had a family reunion to go to in Atlanta. And of course, Carter thought nothing of it. So fast forward to the reunion, McGrady was sitting at a table all alone when randomly an older lady approached him and sparked up a conversation, which then somehow naturally led to them talking about basketball. And long story short, that's where McGrady eventually found out that Vince was his distant cousin, because it just so happens that that older lady actually turned out to be Carter's grandmother. After discovering that information, McGrady couldn't wait to tell Carter what he just learned. So he immediately called him to let him know that they were cousins. I get a call from on my grandmother's phone, what's up cuz, what's up cuz, what up, man? who the hell is this? It's Mac, man, it's T-Mac, what's up cuz? And that's how we found out we were cousins. <laughs> As you know, they both would wind up with the same franchise just a year apart. T-Mac, who entered the league first, was ecstatic when the Raptors also picked Vince up the following year, as they played alongside each other in the most premier basketball league in the world, and also shared the stage at the 2000 slam dunk contest. It was almost like they were proud to call each other family. Put my money on I gotta go with my cousin. Vince is the favorite. He's gonna, he gonna light the crowd up. Two branches of the same family tree ultimately became NBA All-Stars. For the most part, these two had nothing but love ever since that family reunion in July of 1997. We played AAU ball together. All right, so I knew he was on the small, younger team, I was on the big, on, on the older team. So we used to he watch each other us. play. Never knew we were cousins. Crazy. So those were just a few more NBA coincidences that I really wanted to share with you guys. Don't hesitate to let me know some other coincidences that you know of down in the comments below. Also, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.